Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 1st of February 2021 and the time has just gone 10.10 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start uh, to the European trading session. Um, we saw a lot of volatility in the financial markets last week. Uh, that was largely driven um, by the, the stories um, circulating around the likes of Reddit uh, and the stocks that were very much in play. Uh, where stocks such as GameStop was it was a big one, and to an extra extent, um, AMC Entertainment, uh, and all, on top of that, um, BlackBerry as well, and, and amongst a few others. Um, the, the major kind of theme of, of, the, of the last few days has been that we saw wild swings, uh, particularly to the upside, in a handful of stocks which were heavily shorted, uh, and, and this and this kind of came about by by a, a band or a swarm of uh, of, of retail investors. Uh, looking at buying up stocks that were heavily shorted with the view to creating a short squeeze. That drove things higher and higher. It inflicted quite a bit of pain on a number of hedge funds. On the back of that, we then saw uh, some of these trading apps which the retail investors have been using either curtail activity in terms of um, ability to open new positions or add to new positions, or in some cases actually we're not even allowed to open new, new positions. Uh, towards the back end of last week, those restrictions were, were loosened, uh, so we did see a return to volatility on Friday. Over the weekend, it seems that the, kind of the, um, the individuals chatting to each other uh, on the likes of Reddit and these kind of forums uh, moved away, kind of, um, from, you know, spend more time talking about silver. Um, the, the you know a hashtag you know uh, uh, hashtag silver short squeeze um, was uh, was doing the rounds. Uh, and with that, we saw a major, pretty big move to the upside in silver. Uh, silver, it's, it's, you know, it's nearly up ten percent on the day. Um, and with that, uh, we did see a kind of broader upward move in, in mining stocks. Um, we saw on, on Australia and obviously on, on the London market as well. Now, even though sentiment originally last night U.S. index futures traded lower, and that had initially a negative impact on kind of wider sentiment, but the mood turned around, and partially because probably because the regulator was very concerned about the potential ramifications of a short squeeze impacting hedge funds, which could potentially cause losses or you know tr trickle down losses uh, around 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 the world uh, around the financial system. But it seems to me that. Um, the financial markets are less fearful of um, you know, individuals you know, trying to create a short squeeze in a big macro product like silver because it's much more difficult, even if you do get, get a lot of uh, individuals together, it's difficult to kind of ramp up the price on its own, whereas low liquidity stocks such as GameStop can get these much more um, wild moves. So it seems to me that the, the mood in the overall financial markets has been is less fearful now because it seems to me that traders who are trading stocks and other other bit, other, um, other other shares are looking at well, if the retail, if, if, the, if the swarm of retail investors are focusing on a big micro a macro product such as silver, it's probably not going to have a massive you know negative ripple out effect across the financial markets. So European stock markets are pulling back, pulling back some of the losses that occurred last week. U.S. index futures are, are trading higher, uh, and as I mentioned, silver uh, is up well over 9%. So it's a big move to the upside on that. Um, as always with my videos, I'll run through the week ahead. I'll cover, I'll cover the big indices, the big uh, currency pairs, and also the big commodities. And yes, uh, I definitely will be able to take a look at silver's price. Um, so if you take a look at the week ahead, it can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights and under latest news and analysis. So the vaccine story continues to be in, in, in tick away in the background. We also have a, big, um, a number of big companies reporting last week. Yes, more to come this week. But like I said, all the kind of the, the volatility surrounding the likes of GameStop really um, stole the headlines last week. So U.S. reporting season is, is continuing uh, tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Off the bet, Google's parents will post their fourth quarter numbers. Let's see how they do on the advertising front. Uh, they've been very good at um, kind of stealing business away um, from the kind of traditional advertising agencies such as WPP, um, Amazon, who have obviously had cleaned up because of the, of, uh, because of um, the pandemic. Uh, their demand across the board uh, for, uh, for for items has, has skyrocketed. So they're like analysts are going to have high expectations for their numbers. Um, BP, a full year numbers coming out tomorrow. That's going to be in focus. The the British oil oil giant is kind of moving away 
from uh, from from um, from fossil fuels, looking more towards renewables, but that's going to be a slow process. Uh, we have fourth quarter GDP numbers coming out from the from the um, from the from the EU. Keep in mind, at the back end of last week, we got updates from France, Germany, and Italy. Um, they were all, to be honest, quite low. If the French reading for Q4 was negative, the Italian and the German figure were positive, but only ever so slightly. <clears throat> Um, on Wednesday, we have the um, global service PMI reports coming out. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we'll have a number of countries from China, the main European economies, and also on the US. Both the phone, the, the telecom giant have their third quarter numbers coming out on, um, on, on, on Wednesday also. The Bank of England administrative decision uh, on Thursday. Um, not a few weeks ago, we heard from um, um, the governor um, of the Bank of England, Mr. Andrew Bailey, he basically seemed to kind of talk down the idea of negative interest rates. He described it as a controversial policy, and that was one of the reasons why the British pound did, did, did fairly well in the last few weeks. Um, so any kind of updates in relation to that? To be fair, some people were looking at it going, you're always mentioning negative interest rates, but it, it seems to me that you're just mentioning it as a... So if you do go down that route at some point, you can always say, well, we talked about it beforehand, but they never seem to be overly convincing about it. And the most recent update in relation to negative interest rates seem to talk it down. BT, the telecoms company, have their third quarter update on Thursday morning. Um, Royal.shell are going to have their, their full year figures. Obviously, tomorrow we have BP. So whatever we see on the BP could set the tone or Royal Dutch's numbers coming out two days later. Um, Peloton Interactive. Peloton, we've obviously been uh, seeing a lot of um, seen a huge jump in demand on account of the of the of the, of the pandemic and people doing uh, exercises at home. Their their uh, second quarter numbers are coming out uh, on Thursday, and the major um, update of the week: U.S. non-farm payrolls coming out on Friday. And speaking of which, uh, my colleague Michael Houston will be holding a live non-farm payrolls webinar. Uh, feel free to sign up for that. If you go to our website, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, you're going to see um, webcam, uh, webinars and events. Uh, and that's going to commence on Friday the 5th of February at 13.15 GMT. Now, as promised, I'll run through the major markets, covering the major indices, currency pairs, and commodities. So starting off with the FTSE 100, um, this is a bit, the, to be honest, the the, the, the price action we've seen on the FTSE 100 the last few the last few sessions uh, looks quite similar to what we've seen across the board um, on the DAX and the Dow and the S&P 500. So it'll be, it'll, uh, my analysis will, will seem quite similar. But we had you know a multi-year high, kind of I believe it was a 10-month high was achieved in early in, in early in uh, in early January. That was on the back of the kind of the hopes that for, that, um, that Mr. Biden would go down the, the stimulus route. Um, that's been a kind of common theme. We've had, if, if, if we've retreated from the recent high, we've been pushing lower. Um, because of all the uncertainty in relation to, to game stock and the likes, we did fall to kind of multi-week lows at the back end of last week. But if you look at today's candle, so far it's been quite big. It's been quite bullish, rather. Um, it's, it's, it seems like I mentioned sentiment as a, as turned around today. Things that seem to traders seem to be less fearful that if a group of um, retail investors are targeting something like silver for a short squeeze, that's kind of, that's less likely to have a negative impact on the kind of wider financial system than say if you short if you, if you do a short squeeze in a couple of stocks that could potentially have major ramifications for a hedge fund or two, which if they get into trouble could ripple out across the entire financial system. So we are seeing a decent rebound. Uh, this candle so far looks quite looks quite bullish. Obviously, we're, um, we're we've got quite a quite a bit of trading left to, to see. If you can get hold above the recent lows, and if you get you know if you can hold above the recent lows, that could act as a decent floor. And, and if, if you do manage to build build on those gains, we could look at heading back towards the 50-day moving average, the blue line there, in at 6,564. Notice on, on several occasions that blue line, the 50-day moving average, acted nicely as resistance. And if a metric has been of importance in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future. And then if it be move beyond the 50-day moving average and maintain above the 50-day 50, 50 moving average, we could then be looking at heading back up towards 6,900, and then we could be looking at heading back up towards the uh, the recent highs that were set in early January around 6,957. But if we do move lower from here, uh, and if you, if you take out uh, today's lows, we could be looking at heading back down towards, well, if you look at this general zone, the water on a day moving average in a 6,258 down to the 
this red line, the 100 will be average in a 6,168. Notice how, once again, the yellow line, the 100 will be average acted as a, with both support and resistance not too long ago. And we we did see the 200 will be average also acting like his resistance back in early November. So this general zone around here could actually support, should we see a move to the downside. If we do break below the 200 will be average, then if you get a psychologically important 6,000 number will then be uh, on the radar. Turning our attention now to what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. So the DAX was in far better shape than the FTSE 100 um, when the when the kind of recent volatility spiked. The recent highs on the on the, on the DAX were all time highs, so we're in quite decent shape. As you can see here, you know the market's clearly been in a strong upward trend the last few months. If you take a look at the price action, similar to the FTSE, whereby we have moved kind of aggressively lower, today's candle is already looking quite bullish. Um, we obviously have a few more hours, several more hours of trading left. We could be looking at a, a bullish engulfing, whereby if you look at the body of this candle here, this, this, this rectangle, it's almost nearly engulfed the previous day's body, the, the, the red rectangle here, the body of Friday's candle. It almost does, and we obviously see how today's trading session plays out, but it's looking quite bullish so far. If you can hold above today's lows, it's likely we could see the kind of broader uptrend continue. And should that be the case, we could look at heading back up towards 14,000, you know, it's a big number. Uh, and then if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the highs, well, the all-time highs that were achieved uh, in early January. Most of the downside, if you take out today's low, we could be taking a heading back down towards this yellow line here, the 100 moving average in a 13,156. And if you go below that, you could be heading out down, down toward this support line here. And it's sort of in the zone of, of between just north of 13,000, say 13,040 down to around 13,000 itself. Uh, and if you do have a decent break below that, we can then be then heading, heading, heading back down toward this red line here, the 200 day moving average. Over in the US, quite similar situation whereby it was relatively not that long ago, we were at all time highs on the on, on the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. Similar scenario, we retreated from, from all time highs. The volatility of the, of the kind of GameStop saga last week put pressure, but we are seeing a, re a reversal in sentiment. And if we can hold above the lows of the day, and, and we can, if we retake this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, and we go beyond that, and we continue to move beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up towards 31,000, and then if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting the highs, the recent highs that were only set not that long ago in terms of the, the record highs. If we do, if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, we could be looking at heading back down toward this area here, where this, where this line is here, in at 20, 29,461. And if you take out that low, we could, we could then be heading back towards the lows of early November in around 28,868. Taking a look now at what's going on with the S&P 500. I feel like I'm repeating myself here, whereby we were at all-time highs not that long ago. The volatility is surrounding kind of GameStop moved the markets lower. Notice how even before we traded below the 50 day moving average. It acted nicely as support. So it goes to show you that even amid, amidst all the uncertainty of the, of the GameStop um, volatility, on a couple of occasions, the 50 day moving average did act nicely as support. So it was a, it was a really big deal in the um, in the overnight index future session where it traded below it. But we seem to be back trading, hovering around that metric at the moment. Um, we're currently trading at 3,744. The 50 day moving average is a bit below that at 3,723. So while we hold above the 50 day moving average with the blue line, it's likely that the broader upward trend is going to continue. Moving on higher from here, we could be looking at retaking 3,800. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the all time highs. Uh, if we do move to manage to kind of move lower from here, we could be like heading back down towards the kind of 3,600 area. Uh, the lows are kind of late November and also the lows, well, close-ish to the lows of mid to, late, you know, mid to late December as well. So keep an eye for 3,600 on the, to the downside. I'll take a quick look now um, at what's going on in the commodities and then take a look at currency to last. I'll change up the order because I know commodities, particularly silver, has been of importance uh, today. So silver already was showing signs of turning around. Uh, if you look at you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, we saw here after silver had a fairly 
had a fairly sizable pullback. We saw here on Monday the 18th, this candle here, which I brought about at the time, saying that it had the potential to be a hammer formation, um, whereby the market did move lower, but it closed near, you know, we can see that, that the body of the candle cl um, closed near the top of the session. Also, the long wick on the candle kind of denotes indecision, so we have been moving lower. We're now seeing what, what could potentially to be a hammer formation. As we saw, it went on to, that, that appears to be the case because the market moved higher. It pulled back, it found support nicely from the 100-day moving average at 24, spot 86, and then it moved on higher again. But keep in mind, we did manage um, to kind of create a bit, a bit of a gap there. We have a long wick on this candle. When you have these kind of moves, you know, up 10% in the back of a short squeeze being talked about on Reddit, it could be a sign, it might be, it's possible, that we could see a bit of a cooling off. Either the upward trend continues, but at a slower pace, we might even see a bit of a pull, a bit of a pullback because aggressive moves like this um, are difficult to maintain. So the market is moving higher. Positive momentum. If you look at MACD indicator, is moving higher as well. So you'd be more confident that the upward move is going to continue. But we just just be be, um, be careful that we could see a bit of a cooling off. Uh, we're currently trading. Um, you know, we we got we got as high. We kind of close, well, just north of kind of 30 bucks uh, on, on, on our silver. We have retreated since then. We're currently at 29, spot 30. If the kind of broader upward trend does continue from here, we could be looking at targeting, um, uh, we could be looking at targeting 32, spot 47, which is again the highs of in around January, um, highs of January 2013. And then if we go beyond that, we can then be looking at targeting the highs of September 2012, back around 35, spot 38. So keep an eye for those, those uh, levels to the upside if we get a broader uptrend continues. If we do manage to move lower from here, support could come into play in around 28. Notice how it wasn't too far away from 28, uh, with 27, spot 90, 92 was the highs of, of mid-January. Also, we create a small bit of a gap here, not a huge amount, but... Um, one of the kind of one of the kind of uh, the myths of uh, of gaps is that they're always filled. They're not always filled, but they are often filled. So it could be the case that the market retreats, goes back, fills this gap, either it just goes just goes below sub 28 or, or down towards 27 spot 65, uh, and then potentially before potentially carrying on the broader upward trend. Uh, it's only really if you kind of take out the 100 day moving average. Um, the, the, that yellow line there, so that we kind of begin to be concerned about the, um, the reliability of the kind of recent upward move. Um, continuing with commodities, going to gold. Gold has been kind of shunted around because of the moves we've seen in silver. We can see here that it's hovering just just above its purity move of the average, which comes into play at 1850. We're currently on 1859 on gold. We've I've seen a lot of um, long wicks on these candles here, and it seems which tends to denote indecision. So it seems to me that, that gold is a bit unsure which way it's, it's going to go. It's kind of it's trading in a relatively small range. If we can continue to hold above the 200 moving average, the kind of the more recent upward move is more is likely to continue. We could be looking at retesting the kind of the uh, the 1900 area. Conversely, if you take out the recent lows, take out last week's lows in around 18. 31, we could then be looking heading back down towards the lows of mid-January in around 18, 1804. Uh, coming on now um, to oil, take a look at Brent crude oil. To be honest, Brent crude oil and the oil market has been fairly quiet. Uh, we, we, we kind of racked up multi-month highs, 11 month highs were achieved in the middle of, the middle of January, and ever since then the market has been trading um, in a relatively tight range. It hasn't, it's given up a small bit of the ground, but not a huge amount, uh, but the broader upper trend isn't very much intact. While we, while we hold above this blue line here at the 50-day moving average, uh, it's likely that a broader upper trend is going to continue. So 60 bucks a barrel is going to be the level uh, traders are going to be keeping an eye out for. A move lower could find a support from the 50-day moving average uh, in at 51, it's about 86. We can see on a few occasions that actually had resistance back in October and also as support in November. And lastly, coming out of currencies, so the currency is the last this time around because uh, silver has been the, uh, the hot market uh, of, the, uh, of the session, of the hour. Um, so we can see here that 
The euro dollar hit its highest level in over two years in early January. It's had a move to the downside, following support from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. More recently, we have seen the, it slip back below the 50 day moving average, which is itself is a bit of an, a bit of a negative indication. But we're still comfortably above the kind of 120 mark. So if we can hold above the kind of recent the recent the recent lows in at one spot 2058 and also kind of one one spot 20 itself is kind of a big big number we could see the kind of broader upward trend continue but if you do have a fairly aggressive move through back through one spot 2058 if i could put 120 on the on the on the radar and a move below that could take us back down towards the lows uh this kind of late november early december in around one spot 19 one spot 1923. Uh, a move to the upside uh, could take us head as you could see us heading retesting one one kind of one spot 22 and then if you go beyond that we could look at your test and the multi-year highs that were achieved uh, in the first week of january and lastly come on to pound dollar um lastly so it's been a fairly quiet morning uh, on pound dollar we have seen it was only very recently we, we faded its highest level over two and a half years so pound dollar is in a strong upper trend to be honest the, the, the ranges we've seen have been relatively quiet in that regard it's a bit uninteresting uh, but the, the upward trend is still very much uh, intact it seems to be kind of finding it difficult to to advance so it could be a sign that the upward trend is going to continue but maybe at a, at a less aggressive pace we could see a bit of sideways trading or even a bit of a pullback but you know we're well above the fifth of the moving average so the broader upward trend is still very much intact if we move on higher from here, because we're currently in at one spot, 3707, the next big number to watch out for, 11 to watch out for, will uh, will be 140. Uh, any moves with a downside could see a support come into play from, from like last week's low um, in around one spot, 3609. And, and then if you go below that, keep an eye out for this blue line here, the 50 moving average, it actually might see a support on a couple of occasions in December. So keep an eye out for that metric, uh, that level uh, to the downside, should we have a very decent pullback. Uh, that's all from this video. Thank you for listening. Have a good training week and good luck.